invite you to stand for our Western Chapel Breakthrough Prayer, which will be on the PowerPoint ahead of you. If you will please join with me. Heavenly Father, help us see what you would have us see. Be what you would have us be, and love as you love. Empower me to build your kingdom today. Amen. And brothers and sisters, you may be seated for our prelude this morning and act like procession as the men in black bring to us, fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> So that's a good thing for us to be that busy, but there's going to be plenty of ways for all of us to get involved and be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we'll start with our full calendar page. We're going to have an administrative council meeting tomorrow night that's going to be on Zoom at 7. Uh, the choir, the full choir is going to meet on the 10th this Wednesday at 5 for practice. August the 11th, uh, this coming Thursday, we'll be packing lunches for the Hope Center. Note that on this coming Saturday is our blood drive and the community event. The blood drive is going on from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. here in the Family Life Center. And our community event will be back there in the pavilion, 11 to 1, rain or shine. So make note of that. Uh, August 15th, next Monday morning, I invite you to join me at Ettrick Elementary, where we will be having a prayer meeting for the school's event. And you'll get the opportunity to go from classroom to classroom to pray for the teachers, the students, the administrators, and the entire staff of Ettrick, wherever they are in the building. So please come out and join us for that. And note that that Monday evening, next week at 6 p.m., also on Zoom, we will have a finance meeting. So, brothers and sisters, that's a couple of busy seven days that we have coming up. A couple of other things to let you know. Uh, we are into uh, August. So there's uh, some new collections we're doing for the Chesterfield Food Bank. Last month, we were collecting applesauce. So this month, we're asking you to bring in spaghetti sauce and noodles for the Chesterfield County Food Bank. So that will be our August things to donate. Also, our school supplies, if you look by the sound booth back there, our school supplies have grown. Uh, those are all due by next Sunday, so if you have the chance to bring in those school supplies, you've got one more Sunday, just bring them in, drop them there on the table, and we'll make sure we get those to the schools. If you look under the table, we're still collecting from Mercy Mall, we're collecting those suitcases, so if you have some gently used older ones that you would like to donate, we're happy to take those and deliver them for you. On top of that, Mercy Mall is also looking for clothes for uh, adult men for children and for babies. So if you have some gently used clothing for any of those categories, also bring those in and we will get those to Mercy Mall. A couple other things, folks, coming up. Uh, on August the 18th, that's uh, next Thursday, 
Uh, the Heart Recovery Group at the Spurring Up Hope Farm is graduating on August the 18th at 11 a.m. If you would like to come to that, just let me know, and we'll be sending out an email blast uh, beginning of next week with the directions. It's out in Amelia Courthouse. If you were not able to join us for the last graduating class last month, do come out and join us again or come out for the first time. It's a very powerful experience that I hope you can join us for. Also, September the 24th, that's one of the last Saturdays of September, we're going to have another church cleaning day. When we met in March, we cleaned out and improved the shed. Now we're going to do some cleaning here inside the church, including the Family Life Center, the kitchen, but also the classrooms and part of the old sanctuary. So if you can join us for September the 24th for that morning, what would you say, Mike? 9 at 9 a.m.? If you join us about 9 a.m. and come, many hands make quick work. Last time we got done about noon time. So the more people we have, the quicker we can go. We would love to have you there. So, last but not least, uh, announcement number 11. So, BJ, if you can go to the next slide with that kind of that timetable. So, folks, I know this is kind of blurry, so I'm going to just talk you through it. Uh, we are beginning our second month of our Miraculous Power of Prayer sermon series. And so since we're a month into this whole thing, about halfway through, I thought it would be a good thing to bring up why we're doing this again and what's going to happen over the course of the next 12 months. We're going to actually send this out so you have it this week. But the reason we're doing this whole sermon series on prayer is we're going to be asking God some very powerful questions for our church over the next couple of months. Not only will we ask God through prayer, who are you calling me to be? What steps are you calling me to take? And where are you calling me to serve? Those are things that in prayer we ask God pretty often. We're also going to ask those same things for our church. Lord, who are you calling Wesley Chapel to be now and in the future? Where are you going to call us to take a next step? What does that mean? Does that mean improving our family or life center to look more like a worship space? Is it building a new sanctuary? Is it improving what we have? Is it getting involved in some new ministry? Where is Wesley Chapel called to serve? Those are some of the questions we're going to be asking because in September, October, and November, one weeknight a month, we're going to have a covered meal. And then after that, we're going to have a dreaming session. Basically a town hall where we're, the visioning team is going to ask all of us questions. Where do you sense God is calling Wesley Chapel to grow? And we're going to jot all that information down. Visioning team then is going to take everything we've collated from those three meetings. And over the course of the winter and early 2023, we're going to list out the top five to ten things of common interest we hear from the church. And we're going to bring those back to you and the administrative council and say, okay, it sounds like God's will is somewhere within these five to ten things. We're going to ask you guys again what you think about that. We're going to decide as a church family together. And Lord willing, and if the creek don't rise by July 2023, we're going to have a pretty good idea of where God is calling us to go next. So that's why we're doing the sermon series. We're going to ask God, what are our next steps? We've got to be used to praying and asking, amen? Amen. Real quickly, two things that I want to dispel that I've heard. First off, everybody's opinion counts. Doesn't matter if you've been a member here for 30 years, or if you started visiting last week and you'd like to call this place home. You have an equal say in the future of our church. Second thing, there's no committee that is deciding behind closed doors the future of our church. This is everybody working together. The visioning team, if you're on the visioning team, will you stand or wait from your seat? The visioning team is made up of the church leaders who have been called by you and by God to serve our church. We as the visioning team, all we're doing is just coordinating these things. The ideas are coming from you. Because the ideas that you have have come from God. So folks, 
We're in this together. And we get to take time to decide what can Wesley Chapel not only be next year, but five, ten years away from that. And the things we're doing now, we're going to keep doing those. We're not going to stop ministry. We're going to keep doing them. We should get a clearer idea of how Wesley Chapel is supposed to grow. Amen? And that's a fun place to be. So for now, folks, that's enough of me talking, I think. I'm going to invite you to stand for our opening hymn this morning. One bread, one body. Stand as you are able. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have special uh, guests coming for Sunday, August the 28th. So, if for the morning, uh, Sunday morning service, we will have a guest soloist, Chelsea Bylos, who is the director at Perkins and Art Center, but is also niece to our own Joni and Wilson Abernathy. In addition to that, in the afternoon from 3 to 5, we will have the Chesterfield Jazz Ensemble, uh, in which uh, Amy and Donna Hall are members. And they will be providing a concert that afternoon with a reception after with heavy hors d'oeuvres. So please put that on your calendar. <coughs> this is going to be an amazing experience and opportunity. Thank you, Maria. What time is the afternoon ensemble? 3 o'clock. Okay. So folks, in case you didn't hear, and also for those on Facebook, so Chelsea Buellis is going to come and be our guest soloist on the morning of that of August the 28th, Maria? Yes. On August the 28th. And that afternoon, 3 to 5, uh, the Jazz Ensemble will be here for a concert, and heavy hors d'oeuvres will be served after. So I hope you can join us for that. All right, folks, let's prepare ourselves to worship.
all God's people said, Amen. 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 Folks, as it is a communion Sunday, it's time for our affirmation of faith, which today will be our prayer of confession and words of pardon. Will you please join with me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of need. Forgive us, we pray. Greet us with joyful obedience. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to invite the kids up today. If you want to come sit up here in the front with me, folks, here on the carpet. Slade thinks the carpet got bigger. You are absolutely correct. It got much bigger. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing? You don't think there's 110 people here today? Attendance is down. Is that what you're saying? We got to do something about that, right, Slade? Folks, you heard it from the mouse of babes. Butts in the church. That's what we need. Amen. Amen. But you know what the awesome thing is, Slate? You see Miss Brenda there? What she got in front of her? A phone. For Facebook, man, you're smart. Yep. So I think we got a lot of people watching on there, too. So we doing good today, gentlemen? I have, uh, I'm going to ask you guys uh, a question. But first, what I need you to do is turn around and look out at the congregation. See all those faces out there? Who out there look, looks like they pray? Everybody. Slave, that is awesome. You think everybody prays? Well, that's great. I like that. That's a great answer. I bet you're right. Henry Jack, do you see anybody out there that you know that prays? Everybody. You guys are too good. Ben Grayson, what about y'all? You see anybody out there? That Everybody. Y'all make this too, much too easy. I made this too easy. Okay, y'all can turn back around then. What about this group of guys up here? I hear you, Jack. Amen. So they all pray too, right? Do you know who else prays? No way. So I'm included on so do I have y'all ever seen me pray before? What do you think? You see me pray a million times. Yes! Praise God! That's what I'm talking about. You saw me pray two minutes ago. Awesome. And I prayed it, right? Do you know who else prays? Jesus, God prays. And who does Jesus and God, who do they pray for? Everybody in this world. How long do you think that prayer takes? Probably 100 hours. Five days. Slate, what did you say? He does it anyway. That prayer has to go on a long time. Three hours. Pretty definite? Yeah. Okay, we got 100 hours, five days, three, uh, three hours. God's got a lot of people to pray for, right? Do you think the prayer changes minute by minute? No. No? How do you think it goes, Jack? Yeah, he prays the same thing for everybody. Wow, you guys are just too good. Jesus prays for you every day. He prays when he gets up. He prays when he has some dinner. He prays when he goes to bed. When else do you think God prays? 
Breakfast and lunch, we've covered all the meals, perfect. Everywhere. What about what you think when he's cutting grass? Henry, do you think he prays? He's cutting clouds. Cutting clouds? I bet you're right. I bet you're right. So, what do you got, Ben? When else does he pray? All the time? You guys are so good. Jesus prays all the time. God prays all the time. When he wakes up, when he has breakfast, when he cuts the clouds, I love that. When he cuts the clouds, when he cuts his grass, when he goes inside, when he has his dinner, and when he goes to bed. God's praying all the time. Does it sound like he's also praying when he does things? He prays all the time. You know what the crazy thing about those prayers are? I don't think... No. You want me to tell everybody that? So God prays when he uses the slide to go downstairs instead of the steps. Is that right? <laughs> he prays all the time. So you know what the message is in that, guys? He prays when he puts his shoes on. That means I can pray yes, Grace. He prays when he goes in the pool. You better believe it. He, he prays when he goes in the pool. I think he does. Pool is his God. So, folks, you know what the message is here that you guys have just taught us? We can do anything, and we can pray at the same time. He prays while he's in the meeting. Oh, I, I bet he does pray when he's in the meeting. You know, those angels are a lot to deal with. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, he does. So do you guys think if Jesus and God can pray all the time, yes. could you do the same thing? Yeah. Jack was, he said yes before I even said the words, amen. So this week, guys, when you go out, when you wake up in the morning, you might pray. He prays when he finds treasure. He prays when he finds treasure, yeah. <laughs> Will you guys pray when you're uh, waking up in the morning this week? Uh, no. No? <laughs> Well, here, y'all make me a promise. Try it, okay? Okay? Well, I bet your mom will remind you. Okay, Jack? Awesome. All right, guys, bring your hands in. And before we pray, we're going we're gonna to make a promise together, okay? We're going to pray every morning this week. And on three, we're going to say prayer, okay? One, two, three. Prayer! Will you guys pray with me? Yeah. See your prayer hands. Congregation, if you will join us. Um. Dear God, thank you for praying when you wake up, when you cut clouds, when you jump in the pool, when you have meetings, when you go down the slide, when you have dinner. When you go to sleep, maybe we can do that too. Amen? Amen, y'all. Have a great week, okay? And I'm going to ask next week, you try praying in the morning, okay? Good job. Do we, have we do have Children's Church today, which is with Miss Mary. So, boys, if you will follow her, Children's Church is next. Brothers, sisters, all God's people said... So congregation, remember when you go down the slide this week, or you're cutting clouds, take time to talk to God. Amen? Amen. 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 Now who don't love the sound of kids in church? Amen? Amen. So folks, it's our time during our service where we lift up prayers of our congregation. As an, and as always, if you have prayers you want to lift up, just... In a moment, when we go to silent prayer, just lift those names. If you're watching us right now on Facebook, put them in the comments section. We'll make sure we get those out to the church. A couple of folks to let you know about coming up this week, y'all. Uh, Wednesday, Laura Duell has knee replacement surgery, so you'll keep her in your prayers. Uh, Tina Hall and the family, Tina's uh, back with us today. Tina's great to have you. 
also Jacob's in the house. Jacob, good to see you, man. And a new hokey right next to him, his sister Megan, getting ready to go up to Virginia Tech. So if you'll keep the family in your prayers. Uh, Janet Smith's with us today. She's been in a lot of pain the past couple weeks, but Janet, it's good to have you here, and our prayers are with you as well as you kind of seek some answers. Also, y'all, you'll keep Sandra Davidson in your prayers, and she's been in a lot of pain as well, struggling to kind of get around, and Roy is continuing to go for tests. If you will keep them in your prayers, uh, you would be much obliged by them. Folks, as we enter into this time of silent prayer, let's lift those prayers up for who needs it in our church and outside. Let us now go to God. Unspoken. Hear your vision. with basic training, Stephen, Ann Johnson, Aubrey and Betty Blanks, Barrett, Madeline, and Marin White, Aubrey Jr. Those in Kentucky, Ukraine, Russia. Lord, where two or more are gathered, you've been told we'll find you there. When we sing with thanksgiving and praise, we will find your spirit there. When children run through our hallways with laughter and excitement, we find you here. And when a community prays together and shares what is on their hearts and the needs of the community around them, You are here. <clears throat> Lord, you have made it a habit to commune daily with us. From the moment you get up to the time you lay your head down,
your concern is for us. You continually reach out in so many different ways by the gift of your Holy Spirit yearning for our attention and an open ear. Lord, you do not bang our door down. You simply knock. And at times, the heightened awareness and noise of the world can distract us. and pull us away from recognizing your unique call. Lord, in this past week, if we have missed your knocking, forgive us. If we have seen a place of need and chosen not to get involved, forgive us. If we have felt or had bad intentions with anyone else, and perhaps we have wished them ill, Lord, forgive us. Lord, we wish to be your people who hear your knock, who see the need, and who love their enemies. Redeem us. Sanctify us. Call us forth. And Lord, as you so often take time to pray for us, may we now pray with you. For the names we've lifted up, those unspoken, those known only to you, Lord, we lay them at your feet. Lord, we cherish your listening ear. Let us hear the knock. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Oh, oh, oh. 
Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Miraculous power of prayer. Who has time for it? I asked the kids this morning, as you heard, where are some good times to pray? And we enjoyed the answers, right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, good start. When you wake up, when you go to bed, when you jump in the pool, when you go down the slide, cutting clouds or cutting grass. It's always a good time to talk to God. And the interesting thing is, Jesus makes a point on what is a very important night to stop everything and do exactly the same. But in this part of John, he's not <laughs> praying for himself. He's praying for us. And though he be leaving, he's praying for those that are currently in the world. Now, as I told you earlier, seminary professors, if they ask you, write out a very clear prayer. This would probably not score very high. Because according to John's Gospel, Jesus is kind of including everything. It's a bit of a mess. And actually, if you look at these passages, brothers and sisters, normally if, we, if, if this was going to be quote-unquote a normal sermon, and we're going to cover 9 through 19. Actually, it's cut up into four different passages. And I've just gone and lumped them together. Jim Cheney asked for a 10-minute sermon. I'm going to do my best to give him exactly that. In those 10 verses, there is a lot that Jesus covers. And again, we're only doing part of it. We haven't even gotten to the second part, 20 through 26, in a couple weeks. For experts, this prayer makes no sense. It's too much. It's too convoluted. It's too much to cover. Why are we talking about it? Because sometimes, folks, prayer is messy. Because sometimes when life is really putting us down and we're struggling... The fact that we can just take time to talk to God is sometimes the best it's going to get. Because sometimes we don't know what to say, and so we word vomit on God. God, please pray for a million faith block. All this is happening in my life. And had a couple of interesting conversations this week with people in and out of our church who said things along the lines of, well, Patrick, it's the same things going on all the time, and I think I'm going to save God the trouble of listening to a broken record. Don't do that. Word vomit if you have to. It might not make sense to you. Seminary professors might fail you. But God will. If you hear nothing else this morning, prayer is messy, and that's okay. Amen? Next slide. Let the designated prayer do it. Or, this is my favorite one, isn't that what we pay them for? Now, this is all tongue-in-cheek, folks, but this is also true. And this happens in every church. There's been a lot of meetings that I've been in where I would love it if I don't pray. Now, that doesn't mean I don't want to, or that I'm off the clock, or that I've said my prayer quota for the day. The fact is, every single one of you has the ability to pray and call God on any situation. 
So oftentimes I'll make this deal in my head. Well, I'll do the opening prayer of the meeting. And Holy Spirit, you're going to grab somebody and they're going to feel compelled to pray at the end. But then I realized y'all are very smart. You picked up on that. And whether we're on Zoom or maybe you're texting under the table at meetings, all of a sudden it's the nose goes game where it's time to pray at the end and Patrick's too slow and oh, got to pray again. Well, that's what we pay the, the preacher for, right? They're experts at prayer. They know exactly what to say when we don't. Is that true, y'all? <laughs> well, I, a professional, a professional. All right, that, that's hilarious. That's perfect. So what we've got up here, folks, is we've got some, quote, unquote, these are designated prayers that the church would point to, or the conference would point to. So at the bottom, that's a pit. That's obviously me at conference. On the left is Pastor Maggie Hasselbeck. She's down in Hopewell. And on the right is Pastor Nathan Decker. He's at Chester. They are designated prayers by their church. And I can guarantee you, they do it too. Hopewell UMC does it. Chester UMC does it. Wesley Chapel UMC does it. Let, let the preacher pray. He's the professional. He knows the words. It'll sound really nice and pretty and eloquent in this wonderful tapestry. Somebody in my first church said when I prayed, they're like, Patrick, you sound so pretty when you pray. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Educated. Oh, Jack, I'm going to take it. Educated. Okay. That was also funny. Educated. Or if on those rare occasions, and maybe, you know, the pastor's not going to be expected to pray, we have our lay leader here. Damn, he'll pray. He's the head lay person of Wesley Chapel. He can do it. I meant to have a picture of Rolo up here, but I, I couldn't find a good one to put up. So what about those two? They're like in these positions here. They can pray. They don't have the words. That's the way it should be. Designated people to pray. Here's the thing, folks. And Dan, I'm going to include you in this. So if I'm wrong, just, just holler at it. But we love to talk to God. We love to invite God into our meetings. We love to pray for you when you have these great successes or you're really struggling. We love to do that. But, but, we want to hear you. Because prayer is messy. It's not always great. It doesn't always sound right. But if you're inviting God in, your words are the right words. Amen? Amen. So we're go I'm going to try. We're going to drop this official prayer thing, educated professional thing. We're going to drop that. We're going to go to the next slide. Sometimes prayer is messy. Let's go back to John 17. And there's a reason why we've split this up into two sections. I've asked y'all to do this several times. I'm going to ask again. Go home this week. Read John 13 through 17. It's the final discourse at the Last Supper. Jesus, in the course of three to four hours, word vomits all over the disciples. The last information that he feels like they need to know to survive in the world and to grow the church, he tells them then. Can you imagine what Jesus is going through at that moment? The Son of God, both human and divine, who knows the moment he gets up from that table, after sharing the bread and the cup, he's going to a place where he's going to be betrayed that is going to lead to his death. 
Chances are he's very nervous. Chances are he's scared. Chances are he's looking around at the table at the 12 people gathered there, realizing exactly who's going to betray him, exactly who's going to deny him, and all the ones who won't be there when he looks down from the cross in little under 24 hours. But Jesus stops to pray. And in the midst of all of those crazy emotions of the moment, Jesus just dumps all that's on his heart. Highlighted a few things from the passage just for you to hear. He starts by saying, I pray for them. That's us. I pray for them. I ask that you protect them. I want them to have a relationship that is close to you as our relationship as Father and Son. I want you to know, Lord, that as I'm coming to you, that although they will be here, they are not the world. And just as you sent me down here to bring the good news, I'm sending them in the world to do the same. And as I'm becoming sanctified, sanctify them. Which in layman's terms means open their eyes that they will see you. So Jesus in about 10 verses, prays for you, for your protection, that you have a close relationship with the Father, that you realize that you are not of this world, despite what the world tries to tell you. He then says that you're sent, you're called to go forth and do, and that you're going to be sanctified. Five or six things, different opinions and feelings that Jesus has. He dumps all of them in this prayer. Amen. So biblical scholars will tell you, when they look at this, they'll say, well, we don't really know what Jesus is saying. Is he talking about the future of the church? Is he talking about the church then with the disciples? Is he talking about himself? Is he talking about the world? Is he talking about things that are to come or things that have happened? Does it make any sense? To the point where the biblical scholar says, do not combine these passages. It won't make sense. But brothers and sisters, that's the beautiful thing about John 17, 9 through 19. It does not make sense, but God listens anyway. There's no beautiful beginning, middle, and end. It's just a culmination of anything and everything. There's not even an end to the prayer. Jesus just says, this is what's on my heart. God makes sense of it. And you know what? God does every single thing that Jesus prays for. Jesus is in it for all of us. Next slide. For you, your protection, for your relationship with God to be healthy and close, for you not to be converted in this world, for you to say yes to being sent forward, and for all of us to be sanctified. Truth be told, folks, all of us in here are designated prayers. You'll need a seminary education to know how to pray. You'll need to be a good public speaker to know how to pray. You don't have to stress about having the words in your head before you say it. Just let it flow. The message is, if it's a mess, God will put it in order. Just say it. Just say it. Biblical scholars can't make sense of it. 
I can't break it down too clearly. But I think God did all those things. So folks, you can pray. And if you're not comfortable praying in public, that's okay too. But what I want you to know is this. Your words will be the right words. No professor or no grade point average can say, you don't know what to say to the Almighty. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I think it was a 15-minute sermon. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Emotions, folks, can be a very messy thing. We know that. We don't always express them quite as we want to. Oftentimes it's a very visceral and real expression. And we stop and say, well, I wish I hadn't said it that way, or I wish I wasn't that heated, or I wish I wasn't that emotional. God just cares that you speak. God just cares that you speak. And if there's any place, brothers and sisters, where we've fallen short this week, where we haven't seen the need, or if we wish ill on someone, or maybe we just didn't feel like it on the day, The gift of the table, of the bread and the cup, says, I want to make all things new. And I have time for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask this morning that your Holy Spirit descend upon this entire church, and most especially on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ that is redeemed by his blood. Lord, make us one with each other, and one with you in the ministry to the entire world until... When the time comes, we are joined together at your heavenly banquet, and we dine together. But until that time, Lord, forgive us, sanctify us, transform us by your grace, your table, which bids us to follow. Folks, on that night, as Jesus looked out, and in that mass of emotions he had, he took time to take the bread, offer it up, bless it, and break it. And he looked in the face of every disciple, and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Every time you receive it, Think of me. And then he took the cup. And again, he looked into the eyes of his disciples. And as he poured it forth, he lifted it up and he blessed me. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink from this, do so in remembrance of me.
And as always, folks, while this is Wesley Table's table, in our family life center, this is God's. Open to you and to many, to all people who seek to draw closer with the Almighty. All are welcome at this table. In just a few moments, when the ushers direct you, we're going to offer a tension. Bread will be broken off to you, and you can take it. We have the cups here as well. And as always, folks, if you want to take a moment and stop here and pray on the altar, we would love for you to do so. Come and receive the gift. All are welcome to God's table. Will those who are assisting with communion please come forward? Folks, come as you were led.
congregation with us, pray. Heavenly Father, much like our lives, our prayer lives are not perfect. They can be messy, hard to understand, and very few things are often black and white. We live in the grave, and we struggle. The Lord, you listen. You redeem. You transform and you sanctify. And at this, your table, through the gifts of the bread and the cup, you have said once again, you are mine. You are mine. If you'll please stand for our closing hymn, which will be on the PowerPoint in front of you. Stand as you are able. I come with joy. Folks, as Henry led us out with the light of God, the Spirit going forth into the world, we are in the world and God calls us in it. Not to destroy, and even when it's a struggle to change, not even to change, but to represent the Spirit that's within us, that there is a different way. The way to be recognized as God's own child. And all of you have that. And all of you can pray, can pray messy prayers. So forget that, seminary professors. We're just going to talk to God, and it's going to be a mess. And he's going to love it. Go take that mess and love the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. See you next week.